Anyone who's run a committee knows how difficult it is to get consensus on anything, and anyone who's been involved with the debate on global warming knows how particularly difficult it is to get consensus on reductions in CO2 emissions. The reason for this is understandable, because whatever action we take will affect some people more than others. Plus, there's no perfect course of action being put forward as yet. In fact, some of the schemes over the past few years have been shown to be completely ineffectual and not stop rising emissions anyway. But when 16,500 people converge on the city of Copenhagen this week, and sceptics, alarmists and fence-sitters alike, they at least will have something in common, and that is an unease for the welfare of the planet that we inhabit. Whatever your views on whether we're responsible or not for disrupting the balance of atmospheric gases which have provided us with the necessary living conditions to survive, to develop as a species, the fact is that something like a change in ocean current could reverse that irrevocably. We do have access to technologies which can provide cleaner energy and we do have the will to replant and to restore the rainforests and we can cut down drastically on unnecessary landfill waste with just small changes in our personal consumption. Whether the US, China, India can yet agree to work together or not, I believe that next week will mark the beginning of at least one welcome sea change, and that is the profound transformation of attitude towards the environment. We now know, all of us, that we should each, every one of us, be extremely grateful to be here at all. This is Louise Burfitt-Dons for the Global Warming Hotspot for the Global Warming Alliance.